You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. We invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Mondays of every month, join Apostle Shirley Jones for Lifeline at 7 p.m. And on every third Monday of the month, Join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration at 7 p.m. Every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. We are starting a new series called Body Double. Body Double is about how our thinking impacts our mental and physical health. The Bible says in 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. So let's begin. All right, so let's read together uh, 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. So what does that mean? Somebody tell me what does that mean? That if we work on getting our soul prosperous and line up with God's word, your body's going to follow right along. Okay. With that. All right. Amen. Anybody else? It's good. Got one in front. What was part two? <laughs> uh, he pr- uh, what he's saying is I pray that you would be balanced Ooh. and um, all around, okay. not just, you know, one-sided okay. in, in all things. Okay. So we're talking about our body as this temple. So we, right now we're on mental health. We're going to deal with emotional eating, portion control, prevention, exercise, honoring the Sabbath, and apps. So there are some apps that will help us do this. But right now we're dealing with mental health. So, so what's mental health? What's mental health? We talk about physical health. What's mental health? Got one in the back? 
brain fitness. Oh, you're brain trying, fitness. You're trying to get your mind in a healthy state so it's not just dealing with the sick stuff in your life. Oh, Cole, you want to scream or what? what? That, that was good. That was good. Y'all need to write that one down. Brain health. Brain fitness. All right, anatomy of a thought. We are thinking and choosing, building every second of every minute. What, what do you mean we're choosing? So right now, are we choosing our thoughts? Are y'all going to be honest if I ask? All right, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, <laughs> what are you thinking about? All right, so who's who going to raise their hand and share? All right, I got one. <laughs> I don't have none on this side. All right, what are you thinking about? Hold, hold, hold on a second. Hold on. I've been thinking all day. I can't wait till I see her because I want to know. My nephew's birthday is next week. Okay, so right. it's been on my mind, like, what are we going to do? Okay. All right, and so I wanted to ask her since I okay, saw her. But right, go, go, go ahead. What, <laughs> what are we going to do for Bo's birthday? I don't know. <laughs> she don't know. All right, all, right, all right. So I was trying to relieve the pressure. All right. Sharon, you still don't have anybody on this side? All right, so she's thinking about the birthday. I'm, I'm ministering the words. She's thinking about the birthday. All right, what, what you got? I'm still thinking about praise and worship. All right, what do you think about praise and worship? I'm thinking how, why would I have this nasal congestion okay. Okay. the day that I have to sing? Okay. Thinking about how I didn't like a certain part okay. or how I wish something would have went differently. Okay. All right. You ready to give it away? Sure. All right, put your hand on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm still thinking about praise and worship. I'm still thinking about praise and worship. What, 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 what about praise and worship? You tell him. Um, I'm thinking about how in the past it seems that I tend to get something on the days that I have to minister. Okay. I'm thinking about how it didn't go exactly how I thought it would. I'm thinking about how I felt like I wasted my time all the times that I put into practice and it still didn't go correctly. Um, I'm thinking about why aren't people entering in? Um, I'm thinking about what can I do better next time? I'm thinking about how can I choose a different type of song that will be easier for people to join in? Um, I'm thinking about what will Sharon say? I'm thinking about think that's it okay you willing to give that away yes i said take that out of your heart so father in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus i give you praise and worship i give you praise and worship i give you all the defects i give you all the defects all the missteps all the missteps my misinterpretation my misinterpretation i give it all to you and i give it all to you i want to hear what you got to say today because i want to hear what you have to say today. so now that i've given that to you so now that i've given that to you what is it you want to give me in return what is it you want to give me in return for what i just gave you for what i just gave you just close your eyes What do you say? It's a lie. The word says, if I seek, I'll find. If I knock, it'll be open unto me. So I choose to see the voice of a stranger I will not follow. In Jesus' name. Okay. And I'm going to keep going, and you just let us know. And you go ahead and give away the, the birthday party. All right? All right. See, see how fast you can do that? Okay. Um, two thoughts that came up. One, right. you had asked if I would share testimonies. I was thinking about if I did, would it be clear? Okay. Would it make right. sense? And two, how I continue to show respect to my spouse at home okay. without talking. Okay. All right. You want to give give the give those two things away? Yeah. Okay. She, okay. She, did she hesitate? <laughs> All right. So let's come back. Let's come back. She kind of hesitate. She want to hold on to it for a little while. All right. All right. Come on. Y'all can tell. Anybody that now they scared to raise hand. Anybody? Anybody else share what they're thinking? Ms. I'm thinking that I got to leave okay. and I'm going to miss out on whatever y'all going to be talking after I'm gone. Okay. And so that's bothering me. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. You, you get the CD. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? I'm thinking I actually want to learn about mental health. Ooh. I know that be I feel safe. Okay. Because I don't say some of the things I'm thinking, uh -huh. but then I notice things that I say to my child okay. or to myself okay. or to my husband, and I don't like it. Okay. So I want to change myself from the inside oh. out. Okay. Amen. So I would like to get back to that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Y'all heard? Say, get, get back on the lesson. <laughs> this is the lesson, though. Seriously. Go ahead. <laughs> 
I was uh, <laughs> thinking about when I did a, a fast uh, years ago that um, the Holy Spirit showed me I was eating out of boredom. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many of us eat out of boredom? <laughs> Go ahead, everybody here, raise your hand. You, you, you know you're not hungry. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to deal with that too, about emotional eating. Anybody else? Thinking stuff? So everybody else? Okay. Tyrone, what are you thinking about? I was thinking about what Nicole was saying. Okay. And that um, the cheeseburger or the, the fries. But I was thinking about the exercise part because okay. uh, I I don't eat cheeseburgers and all okay. that. Okay. And that's one thing I don't do, but I also don't exercise. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're and that's what I need to do. Okay. You're just thinking about what Nicole was saying about exercise. What you need. To. What are you thinking about? I was thinking about all the communicating <laughs> um, that I felt like I had to do, okay. needed to do. Um, with good results, okay. um, but I don't know that I want to be communicating like that all the time. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, sure. All the communicating that I'm doing. I was thinking that I hope he goes slow enough so I can write everything okay. down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, do you understand now you understand why the pastor spends so long on one topic. Because while he's teaching, you're thinking other stuff. So y'all got it? Okay, all right, all right, all right. You can change the way you live by changing the way you think. That's, that's somebody, I think it was Candace, you mentioned that. So I'm going to go a little deeper today because uh, uh, Ashley wanted me to. So hurts focused on becomes resentment. So if you want to get resentment in your life, all you got to do is focus on your hurts. So that's a choice. Remember, I'm deciding that because I'm hurt, I'm going to focus on that long enough until it becomes resentment. Because what I focus on, I bring on. You can go ahead and write that on down. What I focus on, I bring on. So if I focus on lack, what am I going to bring on? Because remember how we had the, the, the thoughts come up and stay in line? We're going to do that today, but we're going to do it in a positive. So hurts focus on becomes resentment. Now, you, you, anybody ever got resentment in them? I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I want to get you turned to your neighbor. <laughs> Anger focus on becomes bitterness. So those little pieces of emotion where you think you're feeling angry and you didn't process that emotion, you didn't give that to God, you didn't forgive the person, and then you, you're walking around and all of a sudden you're feeling bitter towards a person, you can even s hear their names, have somebody with a syllable with their name in it, and all of a sudden you start to feel kind of funny. That's anger that you held on to for a long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm scanning the room, I'm not looking at anybody in particular. Anybody else feel angry? Oh, Wayne got a question. Just like it becomes progressive, though you stop at the hurt, then you move on to anger? Uh-huh. Okay. Or, or you, you can just go straight to anger. You can okay. just go to anger and, and forget about hurt. But it's over time. Because what you think about, eventually you're going to say. So then you got fear. Just focus on what becomes inferiority. So how would fear become inferiority? Because what would fear be saying? Because it has words attached to it. So every emotion has words that are attached to it or sentences. So what would, how would fear cause you to feel insecure? I got one hand. How would fear cause you to feel insecure? Got two hands. Yes, sir. I'm always afraid to, you know, do better or get what you feel as if you deserve, but if you always have fear in your heart, then you're never going to act on anything because your fear is taking over okay. everything right. else. Okay, so you're not going to act on it because fear is taking over. All right? I believe that f having the fear is the opposite of having the faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So fear is the opposite of faith. But what does fear say that causes us to feel insecure? I got one in the back. 
Fear says I can't do it. Fear says I can't do it. Okay. All right. What do you got? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they're going to laugh at me. Oh, they're going to laugh at me. Or if I think somebody does something better than what I can do, I won't want to do it because I'm scared they're going to make fun of me. Okay. All right. They're going to laugh at me or they're going to make fun of me. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> fear would have you to compare your weakness to somebody else's strength. Okay. Fear will have you compare your weakness to, to their strengths. Okay. Wayne? Have me ask, um, maybe I might fail at this. Oh, I won't do good, and I'll be embarrassed. Okay, I'll be embarrassed. So if you're feeling insecure, just know that fear was in there. Insecure didn't start by itself. It had to have fear attached to it. Yes, ma'am. Fear Faith. won't allow me to try. Fear won't allow me to try. Because what did it say, Faith? Um, you can't do it. Okay. Um, someone's better. Okay. All the things that they said, but okay. it's, it'll just stop you in your tracks and not even allow you to. Like if there's a promotion or okay. something. I won't go up for it, even though I might be qualified for it. Okay. All right. Loneliness. Loneliness focus on becomes what? So, so see, the whole thing that, that these emotions don't tell you is its aim is to get you to be isolated, but it won't tell you that it's going to use loneliness to do it. You just think you like sitting at home by yourself. You just think you like eating by yourself. What are y'all laughing about? <laughs> but it won't tell you. It won't tell you that my ultimate goal is to get you to a place of isolation. Because if I can get you to a place of isolation, then I can get you along with your thoughts. Okay? And if your thoughts are already thinking loneliness, now they've gone to isolation, and then the ultimate goal is to get you to the place where it's suicidal. Because, see, that's why God created us to be with a family. It's because if your thinking is in error, then maybe you can help her with her thinking. Or if my thinking is in error, maybe you can help me with my thinking. But if I'm all by myself, I'm alone with my thoughts. Oh, I got a hand over here. Okay, but what if you just like the peace and quiet? I oh, find that, that the older I get, mm -hmm. the more I like quiet. Okay. All yeah. that work, 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 work. Okay. Like, no. Okay. no. <laughs> getting it big okay, okay. and excited about okay. it so that's yeah. not no, right no no that's fine as long as you come out the bed yeah, I gotta go as long work. as you try to try to minister to people that, that doesn't stop some people some people stay in the bed okay yeah. okay yeah. okay i just yeah. want to make sure yeah. i'm yeah some people are introvert and some people are extrovert some people are introvert they like being by themselves that's okay but when you with somebody can you be with them or do you want to stay you you whip them and you, you, you we, we was eating. Uh, uh, we, we went out to dinner a couple of weeks ago. What, what was that place where the people grown up shoot shoot at things and Dave and Buster's? All right, <laughs> they do it. Uh, ain't, 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 I'm not saying nothing, Miss Betty. I'm not saying. It. All right, so so we at our table, mind our own business, and we see a father and a son. Who, who got a phone, cell phone on them, right quick? So we see the son laying in the booth. Then his dad right in front of him, and the son is laying in the booth playing on his phone, and the dad is on his phone. So were they with each other or were they isolated? I'm talking about the whole meal. When the meal came, the boy just reached up. <laughs> and he, he had to be 12 or 13. Honey, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. They never talked. So... They were together, but were they really? So loneliness focus on becomes isolation. Uh-oh. Doubt focus on becomes unbelief. So now how does that thing work? You just thought you had just one doubt for the day. But that doubt went and hung out with somebody else with another doubt. And then that doubt connected with another, another doubt. And then that doubt went and got the doubt from about four years ago. And then that doubt connected to another doubt. And then you just happen to come to church and somebody says something special to you. You don't know what special it is, right? And that doubt really created a doubt because you, you wasn't expecting the person at church to say something special to you. They say, everybody quiet. 
Then let's see what happens. Then so you take all these guys. So now hurt's working with resentment. Anger is working with bitterness. Fear is working with inferiority. Loneliness is working with isolation. Doubt is working with unbelief. And then we got thoughts focused on become words. So we spend all this time to get us to the place where sooner or later we're going to say what, what we felt in those emotions. And then words are eternal. So now I done locked in. Think about that thing. I done locked in the resentment when I spoke it. I locked in the bitterness when I spoke it. I locked in inferiority when I spoke it. I locked in isolation when I spoke it. I locked, locked in unforge- unbelief when I spoke it. And that's what the enemy was after. He was like, if I can get them to say it, then I can do it. If I can get them to say it, Michelle got a hand. So if those of us who are more verbal with mm-hmm. ourselves, we're locked in faster than everybody else yes, because we, we talk faster than yes, everybody else. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but because you talk faster than everybody else, you can also get peace faster than everybody else. You can ask for forgiveness <laughs> faster than anybody else. Guys, I just got to go there this morning. Because with this focus and resentment thing, and this anger and bitterness thing, there's some of you all here that's waiting on your dad to apologize, to say you're sorry, and he didn't. More than likely, he won't. There's some of you all here that's waiting on your mom to apologize. She didn't, and more than likely, she won't. But you need to get healed of that. Remember the last two Sundays we studied about a substitute and a representative? So today, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, in which he, he do the leading, Lady C, would you mind coming up? My wife and I, we're going to do, we're going to represent, she's going to represent your mother, and I'm going to represent your father. And we're going to ask you to forgive us as your parents. And the Holy Spirit is going to do... You can come on over here, honey. Thank you. And I mind my own business yesterday, and he said this is the way he wanted service to go because he said it's a lot of people that keep saying to themselves if they would just apologize. And they're going to live the rest of their life in one of these modes because they're waiting on either their father or their mother to apologize. And so the same way that Jesus stood in our stay, stood in our place, stood as our representative, we're standing in, I'm standing in the place of your father who never said he was sorry, who said ugly and nasty things to you, who said you'll never make it, you'll never be anything. You're going to stay just the way you are. Everything that you touch is going to fail. And my wife is standing in the place of your mother, the woman that was supposed to nourish you, supposed to support you, supposed to teach you about life, Supposed to hug you, supposed to love you up. And if it didn't take place, you don't need to stay seated in your seat. So if I can get the uh, people in place, just come down the center aisle. And this is a time where I'm asking you not to allow pride, not to allow fear to be focused on, not to allow doubt to be focused on. If you need to come up, just come down the center. Um, <clears throat> um, I received the apology, okay. um, but um, then something else came to mind <clears throat> as a result of um, some of the constant negative comments from my mother. Uh, there was this man that used to go to a church I went to when I was really young, and um, he used to just call me. Candace the Queen, Candace the Queen. He was real loud, and I was just, I was like, uh, it's too much right now. And I would run from him. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be around him because he was just so loud, and he would say Candace the Queen all the time. So then, um, I, I mean, I just remember it very vividly. I was about 
think the last time I really saw him, I was about five or six years old, and my parents were building a house, and so there was mounds of sand in the yard and everything, and I just remember him saying it, just, and I looked at him, I couldn't really understand it, but now here it is 30 years later, and it hit me early this morning, okay. um, Candace the Queen, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And so now it feels like after the apology, I'm really able to, it's really able to sink in and I'm able to receive it. Candace the Queen. Candace the Queen. Amen. Who else? Got one over here. Candace the Queen. Uh, I really didn't have an emotional father who would tell you that you loved me. <laughs> but it, was, it, was, it wasn't funny. It was the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jazz asked me, did I want to come up? And I said, uh, no, I think I'm okay. Uh, but then I remember a conversation I had with my daddy yesterday. I prepared some food for my daddy and uh, served it to him. And my mom said, a buck, this is his name, buck. And you could say thank you to your son. And I said, uh, I, and I said, and I, said well, I don't think there's any malice in me. I said, you know, I, you know, I don't expect my daddy to say thank you to me. Uh, but I got to thank you today from oh my Heavenly Father, yeah. Feel cleared up now. Your mind feel cleared up? Yeah. Okay. Who else? We got one back here and one over here. Um, how can I put this? I think I'm a I think I'm a pretty nice guy as I am. But I could have been a way greater guy if somebody just took time out with me. I never had any uh, guidance. I had to always find out things on my own. I think I did fairly well, but I could have did a whole lot better if I just had somebody sit me down. So, so, so what happened today when you came up today? Uh, seemed like everything that was lifted off my shoulder. The Lord told me, I'm already a great man. I ain't never hugged a great man. Let me hug a great man. Great man, would you mind standing? I'm going to start a series for men only. And it's going to teach you about how to be a man. So I, I'll let you, it's going to be on a weeknight. Because uh, all throughout life I hear men say that nobody taught me how to be a man. So I'm going to take care of that. Would you come, men? Would you come if I teach it? Okay. Jamal, would you mind standing? And sure, sure. What, what, what happened? Oh, um, what I got from it was, I guess I didn't really realize uh, the effects that I had with my parents. Okay. Um, I know my parents love me and they do anything for me, but... Until I went up there, I felt like God himself was speaking to me, and he apologized for for whatever I thought my father did or what he didn't do or what I thought they shouldn't have done. So once God had spoke to me, I felt like it was like it never, I don't know, it just felt different. Okay. But that's all. So you didn't hear me speaking to you? I didn't look at it like it was you. You heard God speaking to you? Yeah. He prayed for me, and when she apologized to me for her mom not, well, my mom apologized to me for her mom not showing her the same affection and love, I think that's when I, it broke down to me okay. that I understood my mother a lot more, um, and I just totally forgive her. Oh, God. How feel? Friend. Free. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And yeah, when I went up at first, I thought it was just for, you know, my mom, my adoptive mom. But when Lady C started praying, she went straight to my biological mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just, like, shocked me at first. Something just broke, and I didn't realize it went beyond my adoptive mom. It went all the way back to the doubts I had about 
why was I giving away in the first place? Okay. And she just started speaking and saying that I did what I thought was best. I did. It wasn't about you, you know, and that just did something for me. And when I sat down, I just still wasn't quite at peace. I kept rocking back and forth and realized I never really forgave my dad. I actually blamed him for the things that happened that I thought I missed out on when I was growing up. So when I came back up and you spoke, it was like, oh, my gosh, this is what I needed to. I needed to release him. And when I did that, I just felt so much better. I just felt so much lighter. There's no more heaviness. Glory to God. And and guys, start from that place today. Don't go back to the other place. Start from the place today. You You, you were born again. Got one here, Porter. Then I got Ashley over here. When uh, I heard my dad talking to me, I just felt like um, that it was as if I can break the cycle. Okay. Um, A lot of the men in my family have been the same way for a long time, you know, on down the line. Like you said, you never, nobody ever taught him how to do it. So it just gets passed on down. So when you, or when my dad was talking to me and I forgave him, I just felt like I can start a new trend. Amen. Amen. You receive it? New trend. Um, <clears throat> after church last Sunday, we were talking about growing up and us receiving spankings or not receiving spankings. Or, and um, <clears throat> I know Sean got a lot more spankings than I did when I when we were younger. Okay. And I <laughs> thought it was because he was just a bad child, okay. you know. But I didn't receive any. But what I did receive was a lot of negative talk. Okay. It broke me down to nothing. I mean, growing up, I always considered myself smart, probably the, the smartest child in the classroom. But because I would come home with a B, I wasn't as smart as everybody else. And I noticed, I didn't notice it last Sunday, but I noticed it when I was speaking to my own child. And I wanted to stop it right there because I'm raising a man. We are raising a man. And I felt like I'm never going to get what I need from my mom, but my son can get what he needs from me. But I did get what I needed from my mom. I didn't want to forgive her at first because I wanted her to feel the pain that I've been feeling for so long. Because I just look at her and she looks like she's fine. Mm-hmm. How can you say these things to your child and you be okay with it? It hurts me to speak to my son and my children any type of way. And I just feel like she's walking through her life and okay with some of the things that she said to me. So I wanted her to feel hurt. Okay. But I just decided to take my freedom first. Okay. <laughs> So hold on a second. What does freedom feel like? I'm tired. Okay. okay. I'm exhausted. Okay. Been, hurt. <laughs> I guess I've been carrying it around for so long. I didn't know what it would feel like to not have it on me, like this burden. I just feel free. Okay. I feel like I can do anything. <laughs> cool. Okay. Amen. Just by receiving your mom's Apology. Who else? We got one here and one here. Keep put your hand up. Yes, ma'am. So I I thought I had forgiven my mom a long time ago. Oh yeah, we um, all do. <laughs> but when I had Aubrey, it was like I it all came back up because I would think like, how could you? somebody that you gave birth to, how could you treat them like that? Especially since I now have a daughter and I, I realized that when she wants to come over or when she wants to, um, babysit her and stuff like that, I'm just like, no, I don't, I kind of want, I was trying to keep her away from my mom. Um, and when I came up, the stuff that you, I know I've never said any of those things to you. I never told you that my mom said those things. Um, but when you said them, um, I just felt so free. Like I don't have to, I don't have to blame her. I don't have to um, think about all the things that she has said to me in the past. 
and I have a chance to, you know, raise my daughter the way that she's supposed to be raised. And I would never say any of those things to her. Um, but I forgive my mom and I can allow them to have a relationship and not be, you know, bitter towards her because of how she treated me. So. Amen. You receive it? Mm -hmm. Kimberly? Um, so there's two new cycles going on. Porter and Janae both got new cycles. Um, here recently, I have um, been communicating with my mother more. And what's been coming to my mind is the good things that she'd been saying to me. Um, but there were other things that I was stuffing okay. and, um, things that you and I hadn't talked about. I hadn't told Lady C about, um, but I heard her apologize for those things. She was pretty much raised by her grandmother who was an older grandmother, older than the average grandmother. And, um, so you know, all those old ways um, she functioned in. And so anyway, I heard her apologizing for those things um, and just uh, the way she, she treated me and we interacted. And then it, my father, I hadn't forgiven him because I blamed him mm -hmm. for allowing her to treat me the way that she did. And I didn't realize that um, he, in what I felt he didn't do, was saying all the things that I had been having struggles with, mm -hmm. the thoughts about my inadequacies and where I didn't feel like I was good enough. Um, and I saw my father. Um, one of the things that I remember about him was he would come and sit on the side of the bed while I was laying down, and today he laid me on my pillow. Oh my God. And I forgive both of my parents, and I feel clean. Clean. I feel clean. <laughs> <sighs> Anything else? Anybody else? Got one over here? Got one in the back? Raise your hand so they can see. Um, you step back in for me. With me, I understood the situation of my birth in my head, mm -hmm. but I've never dealt with the emotional content of it with anybody, and I really needed that release. Amen. And I. Thank you for that because otherwise it was never going to get dealt with. Okay, okay. It was not going to get dealt with, and it needed to be released off me. I don't need to carry those feelings around anymore. And I think it's important that I make sure that my feelings about a situation and my knowing the truth about a situation are separate. Amen. And it's not about blame. It's just how I felt. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you for letting me have a way to express those feelings. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Corey? So... <clears throat> I've uh, always liked just like stuff things in my heart and in my mind and I always play it in my head and like since I've been coming here that's been getting better I've been able to talk about things and release things but as my father I've just never got rid of it because okay. he died at a um, he died at a really young age for me and he was never there from the beginning then when he died it was like well he's definitely gone now okay. So I always wanted somebody to look up to, get advice from, show me how to build things, show me how to work on a car, um, just do manly things as an alpha male. So I just never got over it, and I always punish other people. That's why I never visit his 
daughters or okay. visit my sister. Okay. And they always ask me why you don't come around. Because if I have a relationship with you, how am I going to have one with you? Okay. So I've always buried it in my heart, in my mind. I can never get over it. But today I just got a new insight that God is still my father and God is there for me. Man. So, and that's why one of my greatest passions is to have children okay. so I can teach them and instruct them about their life. Amen. You receive it? Yeah. Anybody else? Got one more? So, guys, if you're looking for the service, this is it. <laughs> this is it. How do you put it? Come on. <laughs> People get free. What else you need? What else you looking for? <laughs> Go ahead, Cheryl. <laughs> I'm sorry. You ain't got to be sorry in here. The main thing that I got, I know I only have a small window of time, was that my family loves me. My father didn't hug me for the first time until I was 19. Um, And my mother just has always been, you know, off in her own selfish world. And I know that I had never really said that to Lady C. And, and the hugs. And over the past month, I've been wondering, like, why? You know, why now? Why am I, you know, here now with my family? Because that's one of the questions Lady C had asked, and I have pondered over it. And it's because I miss my family. I wanted my family. And so not only did you stand in the gap for my mother and my father, but you also stood in a gap for those that I considered to be my father because they have said some hurtful things also. So when you hugged me, like now my father will hug me and it'll feel strange, but I'll go through the motions with it. And then still in the back of my mind, it's like, wow, he's hugging me. And he'll even say things, you know, like one day I said, you know, I feel like I'm just, you know, falling apart. He was like, don't say that about yourself. So it's almost like he has changed. And I've always thought about the things that you guys have told me in the past. But now I know going forward I will be able to accept the hug in a different way. So today I felt like a baby that had been held with you know, just so much love when you held me and when Curly held me and then I was able to give, you know, Madeline a hug. I just felt so much love and all of my answers as to why am I here now. Also, it just erased any thought that there were any perceptions as to why she, why she suddenly, you know, here now. We've been here for X, but no one here has ever said this is where you need to be or what have you. So it just, I've missed, you know, my family. Okay. And I want my family. Amen. Amen. I want to show you something. You ready for it? <laughs> Come here for a second. I'm just, I just do what God tell me. Family, would y'all mind coming up? <laughs> family do. They stand with you. They bow with you. They cry with you. They laugh with you. They stay with you. Don't that feel good? (laughs) Now we're going to let your family walk you to your seat. (laughs) Which one of y'all going to do that? This concludes today's message 
on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, visit Pastor Paul for Sunday services at 11 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries, located at 5511 West Marshall Street, Richmond, Virginia, 23230. The telephone number is 866-333-9505. Or visit the website www.paulmorgan.org. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He You're listening to When Christian Speak Talk Radio, a platform for Christians to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, missions, and other topics related to Christian living and services to the community. The views, opinions, and positions expressed by hosts and or guest speakers on any given broadcast does not necessarily reflect or represent the views, opinion, and or official position of When Christians Speak Talk Radio.